Okay, so this is a 70-year-old male with history of a pancreatic head, IPMN. He had a Whipple's operation done in 2015. Um, 2018, uh, this year in July, he developed a deranged liver function with a MRCP showing prominent intrahepatic ducts and small filling defects within the right and the left hepatic ducts. Um, it was managed conservatively as his liver function improved con um, and uh, later, uh, this last month, he developed cholangitis and a right PTBD was inserted. And the PTBD cholangiogram is as below. And today we will be doing a balloon enteroscopy assisted ERCP for this patient. Okay, so um, this is a patient with autoanatomy and I have a new scope from Olympus. So this is a short type uh, single balloon scope. Uh, it's a 290 scope and um, it, the length is 1.5 meter. Um, so the, some features of this uh, making this unique. So uh, the the outer diameter is 9.2, and but we have a 3.2 millimeter channel. So this is uh, some improvement from a prior standard single balloon, which is features only a 2.8 millimeter scope, uh, 2.8 millimeter channel. So you can pass uh, more instrument than before. Yes. Um, so we can use standard uh, ERCP instruments. And then uh, I was just chatting with Rob here like, uh, about how uh, people who do uh, 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 ERCP in uh, post Whipple patients. So, um, and uh, you uh, say a lot of people will try the uh, pediatric colonoscope? So yes, we would uh, try the pediatric colonoscope. Mm -hmm. um, we will sometimes try even uh, the side viewing uh, endoscope. Uh, there are a few, still a few people with a, a short afferent limb. Uh, but I think the... Um, the, the key is uh, obviously the, the, the length of the afferent limb. And in this case, clearly we would not be able to get to it with a regular ERCP scope. Okay, so um, now as you can see here, I started a procedure. So in this patient, uh, I injected some contrast through the PDBD uh, just to show that uh, there are some filling defects uh, in the bowel duct. Uh, these are intrapractic ducts. And there's some uh, flow of contrast uh, into the um, small bowel. So um, what I'm going to do is um, to try to uh, follow this uh, apron limb and then uh, go up to the hepatical jejunostomy. Uh, sometimes I realize that the hepatical jejunostomy could be uh, end to side configuration and kind of hidden behind folds, so it could make things difficult. Uh, but I guess uh, if I couldn't find the orifice easily, then I may inject some contrast through the uh, PDBD to uh, give us a little roadmap here, or even feed a wire if necessary. So um, now, as you can see, I have the uh, balloon over tube already. So the balloon over tube is already into the small bowel. Um, so balloon is up. And then, uh, so I'm going to do a little uh, scope reduction here. Okay. Can I follow? And then I'm pulling back. You see a balloon on the over tube there, on the x-ray. Now I'm trying to straighten the scope. Okay, now hold the, hold the over tube. Uh, I'm so what I'm uh, I'm wondering is the balloon endoscopy help you to stabilize your scope or actually can shorten the, the route that uh, makes you go, go in deeper? Which ah. one is true? Well, uh, I think both because for uh, stabilization, uh, the over tube will help. But sometimes uh, people have a long apron limb uh, after uh, Whipple, so uh, sometimes um, we couldn't get to it with the pediatric colonoscope, uh, probably due to looping, and I think the over tube will help us in that sense. Yep. So now here, I'm trying to see where we are right now. Notice also that uh, Raymond has a cap on. We, this would be our practice as well, um, uh, to, to have a cap on. It looks to me fluoroscopically like we just have a, a very tight band, and then we're going to be uh, uh, going to be there. Uh, here it's is always the the last tight band that's uh, that's a problem. Right. Okay. So wow, women, you did it. I uh, got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we actually uh, <laughs> off camera uh, we found an orifice uh, that we thought was the bile duct, but in fact it was the pancreas. Uh, so this is a nice. Uh, Opportunity for me, uh, generally on these Whipple patients, I, I, I don't ever find the pancreatic duct. So it was quite, quite good. And once we found it, we came back and uh, you can see that it's um, stenosed. Uh, it barely allows the uh, bullet tip catheter to go in. Yes. Uh, but we're now filling the uh, biliary tree. Ah. 
So should we proceed to a balloon dilation yes. here? Let's yes. do that. Yes, please. Um, six mm. So do you have enough uh, wire in? Uh, let's put uh, in yeah. a little bit more. Ah, yes. Okay. So let's exchange for balloon dilation. Uh, uh, so. Ah, good. The wire. Nice. So um, whenever you're working over a guide wire, you want to make sure that you work over the stiff part. Nice. So now uh, Raymond has more of the stiff part of the wire in. Uh, yes. And uh, so we'll proceed now to, ah, that's even better. Yes. That's even uh, better. Is here. Uh, uh, so I think we're going to, to dilate with a six millimeter balloon. So how much can we dilate? That's always my question. So well, you can certainly dilate to the diameter of the, uh, the duct in which you're entering. OK. Uh, at least you can try. I suspect that there will be a lot of fibrosis. Yes. So whether or not we get a full dilation or not uh, and make the waste disappear, uh, I'm not sure, uh, hopefully. OK, now exchange a balloon. Oh, yeah. So what is your plan now? Are you going to, to sweep all these ducts? Are you going to uh, get, a, get a stone extraction balloon? What are we going to do with a percutaneous catheter? Uh, so I'll try to at least uh, maybe sweep some stone cell if the XJ is adequately dilated. And then, uh, but I noticed the PDBD catheter could give me trouble if I put a balloon up there uh, because it can yep. uh, trap that balloon. So. Um, so are we going to leave an internal stent and then uh, take out the percutaneous tube? Uh, I think we can do that. I mean, because now uh, I think the stones are not that big and I see yeah. fragments coming out. But I think the key is uh, to address the stenosis here. Then maybe uh, the patient won't go into cholangitis despite there's some uh, residual stones. So, uh, but in anyhow, the, um, I guess today we'll at least uh, try to... Um, dilate a little bit here and see what happens. But I don't know if those stones are, are real or not, because th some looks pretty big, too. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if it can come out from the uh, uh, XJ after dilation. But we'll give it a shot. We'll see. Because yeah. I was talking to GV about uh, how much he would dilate. He said he may dilate up to 10 millimeter, but I'm a little hesitant. That's why I don't. Yeah, I just want to kind of see what the panel thinks about this. So. I think it never hurts to, to dilate a little bit smaller, and uh, you can you can always upsize no, it. Like, uh, oh, okay. Now I'm going to pull back a little bit. Hold you again. Hold the baby like now. Hello, Wayman. Hi. Hello, Wayman. Yes. I I saw I saw a recent report that um, for this kind of very tight structure in the XJ patient. Yes. Maybe we can put in the eight uh, XU stand. Yeah. Because of the very short uh, configuration. XO stand for, uh, for, for, for drainage and for stone extraction later. We, we can't hear you. Um, can you speak up? Yeah, I, I said, uh, la, I read a report that we can, for this kind of configuration yes. or structure, uh, yes. we may put in the XO stand that uh, leave it there and dilate it, and uh, through the XO stand, we can uh, do the stone extraction. Ah, and then uh, take out the PDBD. What do you um, think? You know, I don't have to go up. You know, I haven't done it before, so uh, deflate a little bit. But um, I, guess, um, I guess we have heard about reports from uh, other centers that uh, if they have a post, um, gastric bypass, room wide type of configuration. They do axios to get the stomach back together to do this. But I think this is a different uh, situation mm -hmm. here. Now, I couldn't get the, ah, OK. There no. you go. No, yeah, there OK, you go. good. OK, so now you can dial it. Ah, you can dial it. Okay, OK. So I think there was some resistance getting that balloon in. So yes. I think these filling defects may be real. Yes, um, I think so, yeah. Oh, keep it dry, I'm guy. Oh. Raymond, uh, Fukami is almost uh, finishing uh, the procedure. Uh, so thank you for your beautiful demonstration. So I uh, will now you. go back to room four. And uh, because time uh, is short, uh, okay. so we may Very not nice. continue the live demonstration on your side. Uh,